I'm going to give everyone a couple more minutes for the do now. Aaron, you said you've never heard of Sigma. Okay. If, is that something that like, okay, actually that's a good question. Have you guys, do you guys know what Sigma is? Can I get some participation in chat? Okay, Renique said no, Aaron, no. Gotcha, okay. Okay, I don't know why these are on the lesson plans that I'm supposed to be using, but okay. So if no one's ever heard of the Sigma, let's just scrap the do now for today. I'm getting a lot of people saying no. Um, okay. That's totally fine. So we're not going to work on a do now right now. Just don't worry about it. Um, if you can't submit anything, that's totally fine. Um, so I will get to the do now in a few minutes, but for now we are going to be reviewing our participation expectations. Um, I'm doing this in my AB class as well. Uh, just as a refresher, I think this is a good time to do it because we're essentially starting Calc B today. So today is the first day we're really starting stuff that's going to be on the BC exam although there is Calc A stuff on the BC exam as well. Okay, so participation. Yesterday I reviewed our lecture and our uh, chat logs and I had 65% participation, uh, which is like 11 students um, in the chat total throughout the class. Um, so just to review my expectation, it's that when I prompt you to share out in chat, I'm expecting that 100% of the chat responds. Um, and the reason for this is, well, I'm not expecting everyone's response to be perfect. Again, when you share in the chat, there's zero pressure for you to have like the correct answer. Um, I just want to gauge student answers so I know where everyone is at. Um, and that will help me like guide what I need to teach or not. Um, so, uh, Damani, can I get you to come off of mute and just reiterate to the class what is the expectation for participation? Like, so like, um, like the class needs to respond, like to, um, like to, to the question you asked, like, like we say send something in the chat. Um, the whole class needs to, needs to do it because not enough people are responding. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Imani. Yeah, that's exactly right. So again, just I'm expecting that 100% of the class responds. And the reason again is I am putting no pressure on anyone to like get the right answer or when I ask for participation in chat, um, there's no pressure to have the right response. Um, so for now, let's try it. Just getting everyone to participate. So today's wake up question is what is your favorite food to snack on? And I would like to see everyone responding in the chat for this question. So please do that now. Awesome, thanks everyone. Yeah, I just chose this random question for this, but uh, Arab, you said Takis chips. Gotcha, and so you said cookies. Frozen green grapes are juicy. I enjoy frozen grapes a lot as well. Um, I feel like I don't have them very often though. Uh, Niki said Oreos, Damani toaster strudel, Oreos and banana chips. Someone in my AB class said banana chips also. I didn't, I've never had banana chips. It's like interesting. Um, Christian, you said ice cream, Kiana, Cheez-Its. Um, Kiana, have you had like those white cheddar Cheez-Its? I like those a lot. I prefer them over the uh, regular yellow or like orange Cheez-Its. Uh, Daniel, you also said cookies. So Daniel, you and uh, Ansel are on the same page. Uh, Derek, you said jalapeno Cheetos. Gotcha. Uh, how do you feel about um, flame and hot Cheetos? And then Alexandria, ice cream, ice cream and cookies and Oreos. <laughs> but you guys do not snack on the most healthy things, but that's totally okay. I don't either. <laughs> snack and ice cream and cookies. That's pretty good. Uh, Kayla, you said spicy noodles, Swedish fish for mercy. Oh yeah, you said you like the white cheddar cheese. It's, yeah, I agree. Um, and Aaliyah, you said munchkins and to toaster strudels. 
Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, thanks for everyone who's participating in chat. This is like the level of participation I would like to see for um, most of the questions when I just ask them. Um, so again, when I ask any math question, um, I would like for this level of participation. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to move, move on to review a different part. Um, we talked about participation. I just wanna talk about the quality of work. So this is just an example exit ticket, um, not from our class, but I borrowed it from a different teacher. Uh, so we have sample A and sample B. I would like for everyone to take 30 seconds just to take a look at sample A and sample B. Uh, tell me which one is better and specifically give me a reason why um, a sample is better. So sample A or sample B and why? Awesome, thanks. Mercy, Renique. Yeah, so I'm hearing a lot of the same stuff. Clear work, fully detailed steps. Shows all work and looks more organized, all the steps. Kiana, you said the math is cleaner. Yeah, I would say in math in general, um, showing steps for your work is like probably one of the most important things. Uh, even on like quizzes and stuff, which I think you guys all got your quiz grades back today. Um, actually, complete random side note, but I'm going to decide what I want to do for like quiz corrections because I know that's a thing a lot of teachers do, but I haven't really thought about that yet. Um, but even showing work on quizzes, it's gonna, it's more likely that I'll give you partial credit just because I see where you're going with the problem um, rather than if you just like write the wrong answer. Uh, awesome. So yeah, so the main thing I've seen is that they're showing work, which I think is by far the most important thing. Um, but just on like exit ticket quality, uh, work quality, um, I would say the most important thing is line by line computation. So show all your work, but also uh, just have clear numbering of your questions. There's no need to rewrite like the words for all the questions, but I would like to see number one, number two, just so I know what I'm looking at. Um, good picture quality and lighting if possible. Uh, that helps a lot just with when I take a look at exit tickets and stuff like that. And then the final thing is just box your answer when you can. Um, if it's if it's like not a graph or something, just always box your answer. Okay, cool. So we reviewed participation and work quality. So that's definitely two things I want you to keep in mind. So throughout today's class, for sure, uh, I expect everyone to be participating. Okay. So we're going to move on to our first day of Calc B. Um, so this was in the lesson plans due now, but you guys have never heard of sigma notation. So I'm just gonna leave this for now and decide if I wanna teach this at a different day. It's really not difficult at all. It looks way more confusing than it is, I promise you. Sigma literally just means sum. So we're literally just adding stuff, um, but we're not gonna deal with that for now. Okay, um, today we're gonna be dealing with a topic called Riemann sums. So sorry I didn't have like a notebook slide today, but everyone can take like 30 seconds or so to set up their notebook. And um, I think, you can start labeling now. This is unit 6.1 or 6.01, um, if that helps you with like numbering and stuff. And it's basically the beginning of Calc B. So I'm gonna give everyone for like 30 seconds or so just to set up their notebooks. Uh, yeah, so don't worry about submitting the do now today. Just don't worry about it.
Okay, so for this first question now, um, I would like you all to take a few minutes to explore, um, and this is kind of getting into um, what Riemann sums really is. But for this first question, I'd like for everyone to determine the area of the shaded region in graph A. So number one, um, I'm gonna give everyone like one minute or so just to work on this. And again, I would like to see everyone to participate in chat and send me a private message for their answer. Thanks, Samantha. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, Kayla. So I'm sorry, I have three people who have sent me messages so far. Awesome, Damani. Thanks for including the units. Great job. Monique, awesome. Thank you for doing that too. Thanks, Mercy. Thanks, Aram. Kiana, great job. Oh, sorry, Daniel, I see you have your hand raised. I'm not sure when that was from, but do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. So um, the quiz that we took, um, I think last week, right? Yes. Yes. Are, are we going to do corrections on that? Um, yes, I think so, but I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do for corrections. So um, I will talk about that either tomorrow or Monday. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, but if you guys want to take a look at your quiz, it should be on Google Classroom. And then I did mark kind of like what problem you, which number of problem you lost points on. Um, okay, awesome. Thank you, Ansel. Uh, Aaliyah, awesome. Yeah, great job. Okay, so I'm just going to do this really quick. Um, I'm not going to ask the volunteers for this, but I appreciate everyone participating in chat. So the, sh the area of the shaded region in graph A, I think most of you guys uh, did this where you split up, you have the triangle, and then you have a rectangle. So first you find the area of the triangle, so it's three times three, so you're going to get um, one half base times height, so one half times three times three, right? Awesome, so you guys all did that. And then you add the area of the rectangle, which is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, so six times three, so six times three is equal to um, nine over two plus 18, which is, oh yeah, I see you sent that exactly, and then to be more precise, it's 22.5. Um, actually, so if you guys want to write this in your notes, that's totally fine. But this part is mostly just to get you familiar with the idea of Riemann sum. So I don't think it's that important if you have this portion in your notes. Um, but thanks for everyone for participating for number one. And then I would like everyone to answer two and three at the same time. And then I'm only going to give like a minute or two for this again. Um, so answer two and three, please. And then send me a chat. I will include a little caveat here just because I'm reading this. It's possible. So determine the area in graph B if it's possible. If it's not possible, then go to question three.
So I don't see any participation in chat right now. So um, if you just have an answer, I think it's pretty obvious for answer two, like question two, it's not really possible for us to determine the exact area, right? Um, unless you have a calculator or something, but uh, I'd like for everyone to answer question three. All right, thanks, Damani, Kayla, Christian, yeah. Great job. Thanks for letting me know, Kiana. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so um, getting a lot of the same answers. So, um, Christian, you said that it's because it's curved. Uh, that's definitely a reason. Derek, you said because the shape. The Kai said there's no defined shape. Yeah, so uh, it all goes back to the same idea. There's not like a consistent slope, right? The slope is changing, I'd say, is a more mathematical way to put it. But um, because the slope is constantly changing and it's not like over here where the slope is consistently one and the slope is consistently zero, right? Um, which makes it easy for us to just like use our geometry skill. Um, in the second graph, the slope is changing. So how can we estimate the area of graph B? Right. right, so how can we estimate the area of graph B? Well, this is where we go to the idea of Riemann sums. And I would say this is going to the idea of the focus of calculus B in general. Calculus B is going to be all about finding areas. So, like, I think in a very short amount of time, literally for this problem, you'd be able to solve it. Like, I could give you this problem, and then you would be able to tell me the exact area of this shape. Like, the exact area under this curve. Um, even though it's very, like, confusing and the slope is changing and all that, you would be able to give me the exact area, which I think is pretty cool. But for now, we're just basically estimating the area using rebound sums. And we want sums, say, uses boxes to estimate the area. So I think it could be helpful to write this down. Riemann sums uses boxes to estimate area. I'm going to give everyone like 10 to 15 seconds just to copy that down. And how I would say, how I would draw Riemann sums on this graph, for example, let's say I want to use three boxes. And boxes is not a mathematical term. That's just kind of how I describe it. But three boxes to estimate the area. I would essentially divide, right? This goes from zero to nine. So I'm going to make each box a width of three, right? And then I'm going to make it the height of the graph. So it would come up to here. This is the first box. The second box goes up to here, right? The third box goes up to here. And then it's pretty easy for me to calculate the area of each of these boxes, right? Or at least relatively easier. And then I can add all of the, add all the areas. You don't have to draw this right now because I'm going to, do this more precisely later, but add all the areas, and then I can estimate the area of under the curve of this function. So um, yeah, that's the idea of Riemann sums. If you want to write this, a Riemann sum is an approximation of a region's area obtained by adding up the areas of multiply, simplify, slices of the region. I don't think you have to write this down, though. Um, you could add, say, Riemann sum uses boxes to estimate area. Um, and yeah, I guess estimate is good. It approximates area if you want to be more precise. It's not just an estimation, it approximates area. Okay, so 
now I'm going to kind of draw out examples of Riemann sums. And I would like everyone to, to the best of their ability, sketch three of these graphs in their notebooks, in your notebooks. Um, so again, it doesn't, you don't have to have like the exact number lines um, and grid like drawn out, but uh, just a general number line and a general shape. And have like adequate space between each one. So like if you drew three on the left side of your notebook like this, that would be perfect. Just so we have space over here to talk about each one. So again, I'm going to give everyone like uh, another 30 seconds or so just to draw three of these. Yes, and so uh, you are drawing the graphs, yes. And uh, just quickly draw three of them. Again, they don't have to be perfect. So what we're doing here is, let's see, the question asks us to complete a left Riemann sum to find the area under the curve for the function f of x is equal to root x on the interval of zero to nine using three equal rectangles. So I would say there's two key things we have to look at here. We have to look at a left Riemann sum, which I'll go over in a second, and then um, using three equal rectangles on this interval, I guess. So the interval from zero to nine using three equal rectangles. So here I'm gonna say for our first graph, we're drawing the left Riemann sum. And this is usually the abbreviation they have for left Riemann sum, LRAM. I'm not, I, I actually am not exactly sure what that abbreviation is for, but for this first graph, I would like to say that we're doing LRAM, so the left Riemann sum. So like before, um, we're going from zero to nine, right? And we're using three rectangles. So our interval, let's say nine minus zero divided by three is equal to nine over three is equal to three. So this is gonna be the width of each rectangle. which I think I didn't necessarily have to write out. I think you guys understand that. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be the width of each rectangle. So we're gonna have the width of each rectangle. It's gonna go from zero to three. That's our first rectangle, three to six. So our first rectangle is here. Our second rectangle goes from three to six. And our third rectangle goes from six to nine, right? So the other thing that we have to worry about is when we're drawing rectangles, we have the width now, but what is the height? I'll answer you have a question. Um, did you want to come up with me? Yeah, um, where did you get that? Like, how did you calculate that L ram thing? Like, I don't know how you about that. Are you talking about the three? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so um, maybe I should go over this more carefully. So our interval is from zero to nine, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we're doing three equal rectangles. So our interval has a length of nine, right? And we're dividing it into three equal rectangles. So each of our rectangles is gonna have a width of three. Like if you visualize each rectangle here, it's gonna have a width of three. Right, three units. So why are you Each dividing it by three? Like, um, we're dividing it by three because the problem asks us asks us to use three rectangles. For okay. example, if that if the problem asks us to use, let's say two rectangles, we would divide nine by two. 
and then each of our rectangles would be four and a half units long. All right, that's so we would only do two rectangles then. All right. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for everyone. Um, but again, so now we're onto this point where we have each of our rectangles have a has a width of three, right? But to calculate area, we also need the height of each rectangle. So for LRAM, so we're going to use the left interval for LRAM. Now what that means is when I draw the rectangle, like when I draw the rectangle, it can be a varying height, right? Like I could draw it this high or like this high or this high. Like it's, it's hard to decide, but that's what LRAM tells us. So LRAM tells us we're gonna use the left interval. So for our first rectangle, we're gonna use this left interval and that's gonna be the height. So at our left interval, the height is actually zero, right? Because that's where the function is. So we're gonna use the left interval, input it into the function, right? So we can see here it's square root of zero. So we're gonna input that into the function and we're gonna have a height of zero. For our second rectangle, I'm gonna input three into the function and then our height is gonna come up to here. So our second rectangle is gonna be drawn like this. Our third rectangle, we're gonna input in the left interval, right? So it goes from six to nine, so we're gonna put in six and that's gonna be the height of our third rectangle. So this is an LRAM estimation. Um, Reese, you have a question? I was wondering if like when you made the equation, it's supposed to, um, we're doing Y minus X over, um, over the um, amount of triangles, not triangles, rectangles. Yeah, so I would say, um, let's say zero to nine corresponds from like A to B, that's our interval. So it would be, our equation would be V minus A over the number of rectangles. So that could be your equation if you're coming up with one. Mercy, uh, so you, do you have a question, Mercy? Um, yes, I have a question. So, like, yeah, see how the boxes are um different sizes. I thought you have to use like three equal rectangles. Or so, um, yeah, they wouldn't be three equal rectangles. So again, we're trying to we're trying to estimate the area. So, um, the rectangles are going to change depending on the function. Um, but I'm gonna just really quickly go on to the second example of Riemann sums, and hopefully that'll make more sense for this first example. So the other example that we're doing is RRAM, which is, so this was left Riemann sums, right? That's what um, they ask us in this question right here, left Riemann sums. RRAM is right Riemann sums. So it's this, the width of the rectangle is the exact same as before, right? It's still asking us to use three rectangles. It's equal to nine minus zero over three. So it equals three. So that's the width of each rectangle. However, for our height this time, Angela, I saw you ask a question about how we determine the height. Hopefully this makes more sense. We're gonna use our right, I guess I, sorry, I shouldn't say interval, I should say endpoint. So our right endpoint for height. So we're dividing this up into three again, right? So our first rectangle and second rectangle and third rectangle. Um, I'm going to give everyone like a couple seconds just to catch up writing.
Okay, so this time we're using our right endpoint for height. That means we, when we look at our first rectangle, instead of using this side for height, we're gonna look at this side, the three. Our three is our endpoint, right? Because our first rectangle goes from zero to three. So our height is gonna correspond to here, right? The corresponding Y value for three. So our first rectangle is actually gonna, there's actually gonna, it's actually gonna exist, unlike this first one, right? This, uh, for our LRAM, we use the left endpoint, which has a height of, it, co it corresponds to zero. It has a height of zero. So for our second rectangle here, right, our second rectangle, we are going to go to the right endpoint, which is six. So our corresponding height at six is gonna be here. And then we're going to, that's going to be the height of our rectangle. For our third rectangle, again, since we're doing R RAM, we're going to go to the right endpoint, which is going to be nine. Find the height here. And that's going to be the height of our rectangle. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna just really quickly show again. So for our LRAM, right, we did the exact same thing. We have three rectangles, except for our first rectangle, we go to the left endpoint. Where does that meet the graph? Well, it meets the graph at zero, right? Like, so our rectangle is gonna be, have a height of zero. For a second rectangle, we're gonna to go to the left endpoint, which is three. So it's gonna have a height that reaches this point. So that's the height of our second rectangle. Our third rectangle, again, we're gonna to go to the left endpoint, which is six. So it's gonna have a height of this. So you'll notice that depending on whether we use the left or right endpoints, whether we do LRAM or RRAM, we're gonna get different height rectangles, right? Um, Yeah, Reese, did you have a question? Then Takaya, I'm gonna answer your question. Um, when we find in the height, right? Why, like, why yeah. do we ever like have to? It never has to go in like an equation or anything. Uh, so I'm just showing visually right now. Um, but we are gonna put them into an equation. So in this case, right, we can find our exact height by. We know our graph is square root of x, right? So what I want to find the height, let's say at this, rec this second rectangle, I'm using the left endpoint, right, of three. I can input three into root into f of x. So it's going to be f of three is equal to root three. So I know this height is going to be at root three. And then that's how we actually find the area, because we know the height is we know the, the width of the rectangle is three. Um, so, yeah. Then we can just multiply three times root 